Hit it. Hit it. Hi, welcome to Beginner Basics Crochet. In this video, you're going to learn how to do the single double. The single double combination is one of my most favorite stitch patterns in the entire world of crochet. The reason is I know I can pick up my hook, pick up my yarn, and create a wonderfully textured stitch just by combining singles and doubles. It's often referred to as the waffle stitch or the seed stitch, just like in knitting, um, because you're combining the different stitches side by side, and then as you work on the stitch above it, it's going to be a double on top of a single and a single on top of a double. So you get these different height differences in the stitches and it's just wonderful. It's really great for guy stuff. If you're looking for something to make for the guy in your life, this is the perfect stitch for that. You can use any sort of yarn you want for this kind of a project. If you want to make something a little bit more geared towards the man in your life, can I suggest the Red Heart Team Spirit yarn? It has wonderful colors and they are um, based off all of the professional teams and amateur and um, collegiate teams here in the United States. And so if you're looking for a simple project to do, maybe a fast birthday gift or Father's Day gift, go pick out that yarn, use this stitch pattern, and you can make yourself a wonderful uh, scarf or something like that. So let's get started and learn how to do the single double. To begin, I'm going to start off with a slip knot. And I start with a slip knot for almost any sort of project I am going to get started on. I'm going to put the slip knot on my hook, and I want to chain an even number of chains. One, two, for some reason my yarn was wanting to split on me. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now by doing ten chains, I know I'm going to have ten stitches, and that means I'm going to begin with a single crochet and I'm going to end with a double crochet on every row. If I began with an odd number of stitches, I would begin and end with a single or begin and end with a double, and so each row I'd have to remember what I did on the previous row. But if I begin with an even number of chains, I know I'm going to always begin with a single crochet on each row. Now having said that, I've done 10 chains, but remember, in order to go up to the next level of your crochet, you have to prepare it to, you, to prepare the stitches for the height of the next of the stitch of the next row. So because we're going to begin with a single crochet, I'm going to chain one more. So that's where a pattern would typically read um, chain even number plus one, or chain an odd number, even though you're going to have an even number of stitches. So I've chained 11. I'm going to work a single crochet in the second chain from hook. If you need a reminder on how to do single crochets, please go check out the Beginner Basics Single Crochet lesson right here on this channel. I've done a single crochet, now I'm going to do a double crochet right next to it. Again, there is a video specifically for double crochets if you need a refresher on that as well. In the next chain over, I'm going to do a single crochet. I'm going to do this all the way down the row you guys. So it's going to be pretty easy. If you happen to have to put your work down to go answer the phone or take care of the kids or feed the dogs or something along those lines, all you have to do is look at the stitch you did before um, you got up and walked away. If it was a double, your next stitch is a single crochet. If it was a single crochet, your next stitch is a double crochet. It's pretty easy to keep track of what you're doing along the way. If you always begin with a single crochet, you will always end with a double crochet if you have an even number of stitches. So right here I have my single, and my last stitch here is going to be my double. Now if you've watched my videos, you know that I usually mark my first stitch and my last stitch with markers. So I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to mark my very first single crochet I completed with a stitch marker, so that way I know that is the last stitch of my row. What's convenient about the single double is if I don't have stitch markers around and I've already made it work out that I begin with a single and end with a double, unless I'm back to a double crochet at the end of my row, I know I have one more to go. Does that make sense? I sure hope so. So here we are, I'm at the end. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work. My last stitch I completed on the row below was a double crochet, which means on this first row I'm going to have a single crochet. Because I'm going to put single crochets in the top of my doubles and doubles in top of my singles. There's a single down there, so I'm going to put a double. You just follow along this way, and you'll start to see that the stitches kind of get crunched up together. The double crochet sort of gets pulled down to the single crochet height, and you kind of get this kind of crumpled up stitch going on. 
I'm going to set this yarn aside and I'm going to pull in the Red Heart Team Spirit so you can see the difference here. One thing with the Team Spirit is it changes colors after the first, you know, several rows, there's, there's big groups of color that uh, changes up. So it's not a true variegated yarn. It has big blocks of color into the sections. So down here, what I begin with white, it very quickly changed to the, the navy blue color. And I'm about ready to start, it's about ready to start changing to the white again. So here I am, as if I had put this away, I'm going to slip this back on my needle, and I, or my hook, and I can see that I ended with a double crochet, which means I'm going to begin with a single crochet. See how easy that is? I don't have to have like brain damage remembering what I had to finish with or start with. Double, single, and double at the very end. Now, if I were to continue going along, chain one, turn, and I would begin with my single, and I would carry on to my, my double. If I carry on with this yarn in particular, you'll see that I have a big block of blue, it'll go on to a big block of white, and so on and so forth. I'm going to set this aside and show you a project that I finished. It's called the D Game Day Scarf. I am from Denver, Colorado, so if you are in the United States and you know NFL teams at all, you can kind of gather what team colors these represent. Um, but this is my game day scarf. I actually made it for my husband. It's made lengthwise, so you chain the full number of the scarf down here at the bottom, and then you work into the chains for a specified number of rows, and then using color changes, that's how I got the color sequence. And I can tell you that this scarf has been well loved. My husband has worn it to, to the games, the NFL games, and had many compliments on it. One thing that I, is, I think is kind of neat, so this orange is really vibrant, right? But it's more vibrant on this side because that was the back side of the orange stitch than this side. So you get kind of this really cool reversible look. Can you see that, how that works out? I think it's really cool. I think you could pick any color yarn that matches your favorite ball team, whether it's football, basketball, soccer, or baseball, it doesn't matter. Do it, for, um, do it for your local high school or your, your little league team. I think these would be great hits for all of the coaches um, on those teams. So if you want this pattern and more, please check out the website, marleybird.com. If you want to learn more pattern stitches like this, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you are always up to date when there's a new video available. And if you want a little bit of refresher course, check out the other videos in this uh, Beginner Basic Crochet lesson. Catch you later.